Okay, hopefully third time's the charm. I have last two, it's Diane. Um, I'm fighting a pretty nasty cold here, but I wanted to do my video on my conversion of Bella Vita by Nora Corbett. And that's what this video is going to entail, is just my color conversion. Um, I'll do an update, hopefully soon, when I get over this cold, and I probably have jury duty on Monday. Yeah, joy. But here's the original, uh, Bella Vita, and she was released, uh, I think November 2016. But here is my color conversion. I call her Bella Coy. <clears throat> I'm going to be coughing, um, hopefully not too much in the video, but... Please give me the grace to understand I have a cold. Um, yeah, this is my my conversion. Obviously, the colors changed, but the other major change on her, um, besides the color, is there is not a stitch of DMC in her. She has um, some petite treasure braid, and the rest is silk. <clears throat> And I'm going to tell you exactly what I used. I had some questions on what I did on these pearls, and hopefully I can explain what I did. Um, but again, feel free to email me at mon.stitches at gmail.com, and I'll um, hopefully be able to answer your questions. If I sound like I'm shouting at the camera, it's because I, I can't hear myself, and I know I speak softly, so I'm going to try and speak up. <laughs> but hopefully it won't sound like I'm shouting. I also have a, a chart that I um, typed up. I'm going to make available in different groups. And when I have them in the file section of the groups, look in the description box below to see which Facebook groups those are in. I know not everybody's on Facebook. So if you are not on Facebook and not able to get the PDF of this color conversion and you would like to do this color conversion, um, you can email me at mon.stitches at gmail.com and I'll put that below and I'll send you the PDF. I know not everybody likes to stitch with silk or has access to silk. So what I have done is I have found um, a DMC equivalent to these colors so you could stitch her all in DMC and get a very, very similar effect. Or maybe you have a different type of silk, um, a collection of... Um, some silk that I I didn't use. I'm going to give you the DMC color so then you can kind of narrow down your choices. But let's get started here. <clears throat> so the black. The black is PH05. And a lot of this black here are beads. And then this obviously is the Petite Treasure Braid. And here, all the black in her hair are beads. And some of this is um, the treasure braid and some of it is the beads. So you do get the nice sparkle. And I thought that would look really nice. I also used PB51. On the original here, you can see this little shadow here of where her tail comes back. And this little shadow here. So in those areas, um, it might be hard to see on camera, but there's just a slight difference. Ho I was hoping to get a little more of a 3D effect that way, but um, to be honest, there's not much difference. You could just do the black all the way through, and I think it would look just fine. Um, so that's what I used. For the whitish color, I used Splendor Silk S. 961. So on the original, that kind of gold green color, that's this color here, all through there. The light orange is Splendor Silk again, S1126. And the dark orange is S1138. For the skin tones, 
Splendor has what they call these designer collections. Um, this card has six colors on it, and this card is the bronze porcelain collection. I had this in my stash from a previous project. I don't remember which project it was, but I, when I found it, I thought, oh, that'll work perfectly for the skin tones, because originally I had intended to do just DMC for the skin tones, but this is what I used. <clears throat> so this is where I pulled the skin tones from. I also used, I'm going to go in on her face a little bit here. She has like a little bit of blush right there. I used Color Wash Silk uh, 556. I don't know if these have names, but again, I had this in my stash. So it's a really, really light pink. And then her hair. <clears throat> The red in her hair is Gloriana Silk. Love Gloriana Silk. Wish I, I loved my wallet more. Um, I used number 109 Black Cherry. This is 12 stranded silk. And then for the gold in her hair, I used Water Lily from the Karen collection. It's called 176 Golden Grains. <coughs> Okay, so the major difference, she's all silk or the petite treasure braid. If you look here, there's this ribbon, or maybe it's seaweed or kelp or something. When I noticed that she was you know, clutching her hair, I thought, no, she has to have something in her hand to clutch. So I found a pendant, which actually is not this one. I'll show what I originally thought would work. And when I started stitching on it, it just... It wasn't proportional, and this worked much better. Then I th found a chain, and I thought, oh, well, she's found a necklace on the bottom of the sea, and she's taking it back to her uh, secret hiding place. So I thought, oh, I don't need to stitch that. So I didn't. So you'll see that that's not on there. The only place that this ribbon comes into uh, the actual mermaid is right here in her tail. And all the color below and all the color above is the same. So all I did was fill that in. It's about about in this area. So I just filled that in with the um, PH05. So that was really easy to do. The other major change you may notice is she has a gold streak in her hair. I don't know if you could see it behind the pearls there. When I was looking at images of koi fish, I noticed that yes, a lot of them had the the different shades of orange and the black and the white, and some had darker, almost red tones. But I also noticed a lot of them had a gold spot on their forehead, or they had a gold um, accent on the front fin with a black um, kind of right on the edge. So I tried to get that kind of effect. Now my limited understanding of koi fish is. Some of their coloring comes from temperature of the water and what they are eating. Um, but there are lots of different types of koi fish. And, and if you look up images um, on you know, Google or whatever, yeah, you'll get a lot of different pictures. So that's where I got that idea from. It was not inspired by the movie Frozen or anything, which I didn't think of until actually I had her stitched. Um, this is 32 count Belfast. Arctic by Picture This Plus. I, all the silk and the petite treasure braid, all the th threads are one strand over two threads. When I started with the Splendor, I started with two strands and I just, it, it was weird. It was bulky and it just wasn't laying right. And I, uh, yeah, it drove me nuts. So the entire thing is one strand over two threads. So, um, Let's see. Let me go in closer to her face. Oh, this nose. This cold sucks. I only get a cold like this like once every few years. Thankfully, it hasn't kicked my asthma into gear. Okay, let's look at her face. The original pattern. There's like a green right there. She, like, she has a green earring. Well, I chose to use... <clears throat> five of my pearls and make kind of a, a teardrop look and then I did tack it down you could see the tack right there so then it wasn't flopping up and down it was it 
gets that teardrop shape. Her eyelash, or I, yeah, that would be her eyelash. Um, I used the Petite Treasure Braid, the black, the PH05 for that. And then her lips. Her lips are one square. So I did a full cross with the color wash silk. So she's got, you barely tell, there's a little bit of pink here. And then the lips. I didn't like the lips. They weren't jumping out. They were just, they were, it looked weird. It, you know, um, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. You couldn't see it. And so what I did is I took one strand of the Gloriana and I did a half stitch from lower right to upper left. And then on linen, you know, you have that hole um, right next to this corner that you usually don't go put a needle through. Well, I brought it back up through that little hole and, and went down the other hole. That's not going to make any sense to anybody. Let's see. Okay, so you've got this stitch. There's the whole... If you've stitched on linen, I, I, I hope this makes sense. If you've not, I'm going to totally confuse you. So you've got a corner and a corner, and then there's a hole in between. I came up that hole in between, and I went down on this side the hole in between. So if I do a real good close-up on her lips, it looks like she has an upper lip and a lower lip to get that effect. And I really liked that with her hair and everything. <sighs> I'm going to pull out here. I'm going to pause so I can blow my nose. Hold on. Oh, sorry about that. Fear is better than you hearing me sniffle all the, all the rest of the film, the video. <clears throat> of course, now my throat. Oh, this is too cold. Now I gotta drink of water. Um, let's talk about the additional embellishments. Well, let's talk about the embellishments that were already there. The original pattern calls for one bead, and it's a light kind of lime green. You can see it up here in her hair. It's also down here in her tail. So that's what I did. I did black all through her tail and then all these black strands up here in her hair. Those are all uh, Mill Hill beads. So it's a one-to-one -one exchange. And then the pearls. <clears throat> I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go in closer. Okay, so this inner strand of pearls is 2.5 millimeter pearls. I had these pearls in my stash from a previous project and I thought I will just finish them off with this project. This middle um, loop is 3 millimeter pearls. This outer is 3 millimeter pearls to about here and then I switched to 4 millimeter and I did the same over here. I just did that to give it a little more interest on the the strands and then these vials. These vials have white sand and they have a conch shell in them. <clears throat> so I like to use Nymo thread, Nymo beading thread. So how I threaded my needle, my beading needle, is almost like I was sewing on a button. You know how you put that knot on the end so you loop through your needle and put the knot on the end? That's how I did it, and I um, put his, all these pearls on until I got the length I wanted. I came down and I secured it. Then I did the next strand, so each strand is secured independent of each other. <clears throat> so then I kind of got... This, this works best when you're laying it on a table. I often stitch in hand, but this works best when you're laying it on a table. So I could get the right... This, this one doesn't want to... Well, I have to tack that down, I think. And then I did this. I secured it here and here and here and here on this outer band. Then what I did is I did come back, and you can see there. There's I tacked it there with a stitch, and I tacked it over here with a stitch. Now, this part of this strand is free-floating, so it gets movement. Same with here. And this part but I did tack them down just enough 
so you they keep the general shape that I wanted and the general look that I wanted to tack it you just have the thread on your needle and you come up from the back and you just not even a full half stitch just a teeny tiny stitch just making sure you catch the thread that your uh, pearls are um, threaded on and then you go back down um, I didn't go back down the same hole what I did let's say I came up I wish I had a needle something um, something more pointy or something to show excuse me so I came up that one and I went down the one right next to it so like a half not even a half stitch over so like the next hole so I came up one hole and I went down the next hole <clears throat> I wanted to do it that way in case for some reason the thread would come through I thought that would be a little more secure um, I did use double strands of the Nymo thread I like the Nymo thread but I'm pretty sure you can get this effect with like invisible thread or even DMC um, and then I secured these on separately both of these vials so you can see the conch shell there better and then I secured this pendant on now when I secured the pendant what I did is I actually put a bead there threaded through the bead through the pendant back down through the bead so it kind of sits up a little more and it actually sits nicely when it's I have it on a hanger right now because I'm not going to fully finish it for a specific reason. And that's the same thing I did up here. Two strands, the Nymo, went around with the five pearls, came back up and tacked it. I hope that makes sense. That's kind of how you couch um, a, a fiber too. Um, yeah. So. Let's say you wanted to get the same effect, but you wanted to do it in DMC. You could easily do it in DMC. Let me just move these aside. First of all, all the skin tones are already charted in DMC, so you just do them as charted. The, the black, DMC 310. The, the dark brown that I used as a shadow accent, that would be a DMC 3371. The color wash silk, that's on her cheek and the under stitch of her lip. 819 would be the DMC. I think that's the right one. The really, really light pink. For the splendor, S1138. The best DMC match is 947. For the Splendor S1126, the best DMC match is 970. And for the Splendor S961 Ecru. If I was doing this in DMC, and again, this is 32 count. Belfast Arctic by Picture This Plus. If I was stitching this all in DMC and I think she would look great in DMC, I'm not saying DMC is bad because I use DMC all the time. I would use two strands of DMC to get a good coverage, unless you were going a higher count fabric. <clears throat> so here's my my chart that I made. Um so I did the original, this is what the pattern color is, floss wise, and this is what I changed it to. Um, some of these are not stitched. Those were in that, that um, ribbon that I didn't stitch on there. And so not stitch, not stitch, not stitch, because they were all in that ribbon. Mill Hill Bead 4201, that's this original, and this is what I used. 42014. I used 2.5 2 millimeter pearls because I had them in my stash. 3 millimeter pearls I found at Hobby Lobby. 4 millimeter pearls I found at Hobby Lobby. A, the pendant and the pearl drop are both found at Hobby Lobby. I used one strand of the Gloriana, the Color Wash, the Splendor, and the Water Lilies. I used one strand of the Petite Treasure Braid. 
now in the hair. I made a working copy and I kind of figured out where I wanted this gold strand to go. So essentially her gold hair goes over the red hair under her hands and then if I can move the beads hopefully I don't know if you could see it I will I think I have a picture of before I added the beads and if I do I will add it um, to this video so you can see that better and then I have the gold come out and around here this took a little practice just to get it to get the right look um, so it was believable that it could be that one gold stranded hair coming across her. So that just took a little figuring out. On the the Gloriana, because it's variegated, um, you do one stitch at a time. But on this chunk of hair, to avoid the, the vertical or horizontal lines that you can sometimes get on an overdyed, I actually did one stitch and I followed the curve. Sherry Burkett talked about this in one of her videos that when you have a, a, a shape like this, you can you can outline it, and then you just kind of keep filling in around and around and around, kind of a spiral to get to the middle. It gives a very different effect. So I, what I did is I curved down, and then I curved up one stitch at a time. Curved down, curved up one stitch at a time, and it gets these streaks like this. Rather than you could see some horizontal right here. I didn't do that on this um, strand of hair or on this gold strand of hair. I don't think it looks bad. Um, either way, I think it looks great. But that's how I got that kind of the streaks going that way in her hair. And you can see some vertical here. So on this section, I kind of filled it in as a more vertical than, than the curve. Um, somebody specifically asked about the beads. I, I hope this helps answer your question about how I attach the beads. So they're not, if I can get, See, my finger can go under them, so they're stranded. I stranded, put them on thing. So it's not like you put a bead on, go through your fabric, put a bead on, go through your fabric. That's what I did on these, yes. But that's not how I put the strands of pearls on. Okay. And I talked about the Splendor skin collection. Oh, the back stitching. Yeah, I just used the... That and the eyebrow was PBO5. Lips I showed, the additional embellishments. I found most of them at Hobby Lobby. Um, I had looked at, at Joann's and I'll show you a couple things I found at Joann's that could have worked. Um, I attached with Nymo thread. Pattern was designed by Nora Corbett and I stitched mine on 32 Count Belfast in Arctic by Picture This Plus. This is my color conversion. I'm gonna move the camera. <clears throat> you know what, I'll just bring stuff over. No, I'll move the camera. Well, this was another option for her hair. Planet Earth Fiber. This is silk. Um, this is called Fury 5. So that was another option, but I liked this one a little more. This one was a little more orange than this one. So I thought that would look good. And this was another option. Carrie's Creation Silk Garnet. Again, these are both variegated. <coughs> And this is what I found at Hobby Lobby. And so I just hooked that on there myself. And these are the beads that I have left over. Many, many pearls. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm thinking when I finish Aphrodite, maybe I'll put some pearls on her. But there are so many different things out there for charms and additional embellishments. Here are some other things I had to choose from. Let me turn the light so you can see a little better. Okay, this is the pendant I originally chose. This blue, I thought it'd be really stark, but it, it just, it's too big. It, it wasn't proportional. Because I originally thought this with this chain that has um, crabs, turtles, an octopus, and a starfish. When I started playing with the embellishments, it just didn't look right. Um, here's another potential em embellishment that would have given it a very different look. I liked the dark, you know, to accent the black with the pearl. 
But again, I, I like what I chose in the end. And this is another one. Sorry, I'm trying to look through the camera and do this at the same time. This one was kind of cool. I found this at Joann's too. That one was kind of cool. I think if I didn't have all the other strands of pearls and just had this on there, it would look really nice. And then here are some other things I just had in my stash. I thought I'd use these for Lacey Frost, and I didn't, and so I pulled them out to see if they'd work on this piece, and they just, no, they weren't right. And then these are other charms that I found. Um, I think I found this one at Walmart, actually. Uh, sand dollar, fish, starfish, another type of starfish, and a conch shell. So there are lots of different things that you can, can do. And this extra embellishment, I need to give a shout out to Cowgirl Kate. Because when I was thinking about... Oh, she needs to be clutching something. I watched one of Cowgirl Kate's videos. I don't remember which one it was. But she was talking about picking additional or kind of thinking outside the box for your embellishments. Um, I think she was focused on her Queen of Peace color conversion with the red dress. Um, I don't think she's finished that one. I'm waiting for her to finish that one because I have that pattern. And I'm sure it, her work is just beautiful. If you haven't seen Cowgirl Kate, go look at Cowgirl Kate with a K. Um, I'll try and link her channel below. I don't remember exactly which video it was, but she was saying, well, I went to Hobby Lobby and I looked at this and I went to Joanne's and Michael's and, and I thought, okay, I can start thinking outside the box. So that's why I thought, you know, these, I, I, I would have never thought of this without being inspired by Kate to do any of this extra stuff. Um, so yeah, big, huge shout out to cow girl, Kate, very, very talented lady. <clears throat> I am not going to fully finish her for a while because in May, she is going to travel with me to San Antonio, Texas to the Mirabilia minion retreat that's being hosted by Leslie LaFleur. And um, since I'm flying, this will travel much easier, uh, you know, rolled up or gently folded. I got to be careful with these because these could potentially break. Although that'll be interesting to go through security with little vials of white powder. Um, but she's going to go with me to San Antonio and she'll travel much easier if she's not framed. And I'm not sure how I want to fully finish her if... Like a black frame would look awesome, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe pull some silver out of this. I don't know. I have to look. An oval would look great. But I have to see what I find. So she's not going to be fully finished for a while. And I know that freaks out some people, but it doesn't bother me. Because she'll be able to travel with me. And she'll travel with me with Lacey Frost, Queen Anne's Lace Original, Autumn Queen, Siren Song Mermaid, My Round Robin Piece, Red, the original, because I'm restitching her in blues. Um, yeah, and, and hopefully I'll have another Mira and Nora done between now and then. But I really look forward to it. And you know, registration fee done, airline tickets done, hotel done. Yay, we get to go. So she'll go with me uh, to the retreat and hopefully... <laughs> I, I was thinking about it the other night. I hope that this doesn't... Yeah. Airport security. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, I hope that this helps or uh, answers questions. If it doesn't, feel free to email me. And again, when this is... Oh, I didn't talk the hair. I'm sorry. Gloriana, if you didn't want to use the Gloriana, I would suggest you you use one strand of 814 and one strand of 815 for the red. And one strand 676 and 677. Again, these are DMC colors um, for the gold. And I think it would look really good and you'd get a very similar effect. Or you could use, if you wanted an even more significant gold, you could use 729. Uh, 676, 729, I th think those are... Depends on how much of a very, um, how much variegation you wanted in the piece, but that would be a way to do it with DMC colors. Um, and and this one you could even throw in a 902 if you wanted. So, 
Um, I hope that answers questions, and I will finish. Yeah, I have to go back and and uh, update my my document, uh, make it a PDF, and then I will post it in those groups. And when I post it in a group, I will link it below, mm -hmm. so you know which Facebook groups you can. Whoa! So sorry. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. Um, anyway. Uh, you can know which Facebook groups to go to print off this piece or this chart if you wanted to do Bellacoy. And I will let you all go. Um, I'm going to do a close-up of the stitching all the way down and the beads and then I will let you go. So we'll start at our head. Get the light turned. There we go. And again, her hands, her hands are there. Oh, mini dots having a meltdown. Her hands are there. Here comes the gold hair, hands, red hair, gold hair. And then the, this red was as charted. I just kept that red all around. And this bead, yeah, that's there as charted. Let me flip this down now. Okay, now you want to be wonky on me. There we go. And the silk gives it a nice sheen. And again, these have little conch shells in them. Found those at Hobby Lobby. So, there you go. Any questions? Mon.stitches at gmail.com. Talk to you all soon, hopefully. Bye.